What's happening everybody? It's Sarah from Buckeye Outdoors. Today we have the Olight Array to take a look at. This light was sent to me by my good friends at Skybin on Amazon. There's a link down below going to this light from my friends on Skybin uh, and do go check it out. Now, of course, in full disclosure, I do not do Amazon reviews. However, I do link my reviews to product pages, which is the case here. The link that I supply down below is not an affiliate link. I get nothing if you visit or buy from that link. So do know that. They sent me the Olight Array and I was really pretty happy about this light and, and for a couple of reasons. A lot of people know I'm an outdoorsman. I'm 47 years old and I've probably spent 47 of it out in the outdoors. Um, I do a lot of camping and a lot of backpacking. Headlamps are very important to me. In fact, upstairs, I have 30 five headlamps <laughs> sorry I can't help myself <laughs> so I have a lot of headlamps and over the course of time you learn which ones are great and which ones really flat suck um, and, and some of my headlamps have different purposes you know they have I'll use a different headlamp for different reasons this one appealed to me because it was a little different they built this with runners in mind uh, from the way it was designed for the balance so I've got, it's going to be an interesting review with this one because when we do the beam shots, we're not doing just my typical measured beam shots. We're actually going to be going on the trail and walking with this light in the middle of the night, in the forest, in the woods, in the dark with the wolves and the bears and the Yeti and whatever. Because that's where exactly I would use it, right? So that's how we're going to use it. That's how we're going to test it. Hey, let's take a closer look. All right, guys, so let's get right to the brass tacks. You can get this light off of Amazon for about 59 bucks. Prime delivered to your door from my good friends at Skybin Amazon. What do you get with a light? You obviously get the box. We'll go over that in a second. Magnetic charging cable, the really nice carrying case, two cable clips, one piece of Velcro, one manual. And with any Skybin order, especially this one, you get a small battery box for 16340s or 123s. The headlamp itself. Now let's take a quick look at the box. You can pause that for the pertinence. They do a nice job on their boxes. Look at that, right? That's pretty cool. So I've already opened this up and it's a mess, so I do apologize for that. But do know when you get it that it's a little bit neater than the inside that one mine is. So obviously you get the light. You get a really nice, and this is a longer charging cable. And you can see the model number on that. Really nice charging cable with a nice retainer. And here are the extra clips and the piece of Velcro, and the owner's manual. Um, this is a nice little case too, should you choose to use it. <clears throat> you know, some people may, some people may not. Now, the stats on the light itself. This light, the length is roughly about 1.77 inches, width of under an inch, height of under an inch. The battery pack is about two and a half inches by one and a half inches by nearly an inch thick. The total weight of the entire light, <clears throat> pardon me, is 4.37 ounces. It is IPX4 rated. Now, again, if you want to, look up online what IPX4 means. The number four relates to water intrusion. IP means intrusion protection. X, in this case, just is X because they did not test it for dust intrusion, or that would have a number. And the four means it's pretty much good against splashes or rain from any direction. So, although it is not submersible, feel free to take it out in some rain. It should be okay. It is impact resistant to one meter. Has cool white LEDs, aluminum alloy main body, and a 2000 milliamp hour 3.7 volt built in battery. The cool thing is, is for the cyclists out there, runners, there's LEDs in that bad boy. That is really cool. So there are two types of beams in the array. <clears throat> Pardon me, guys, I'm losing my voice again today. You have <clears throat> an LED for throw and you have an LED for flood. You can also use these two in conjunction with one another. 
So the mixed beam will give you both beams. The max is 400 lumens for two and a half hours. The low mixed beam will drop those both down to 200 lumens for four hours, 30 minutes. That's actually low beam high, I apologize for that. Mixed beam low both, 100 lumens for six hours. Low beam low for 50 lumens. 50 lumens for 13 hours. Man, I am just fumbling my words today. The max though is 80 meters with a candle of 1600. So let's turn this on. Now to turn this on, you'll notice that, um, you know, obviously this is attached to that, but you'll notice this. These two guys have to plug into each other, make sure they're oriented the right way. Make sure the clip is above. There you go, and of course you could remove that. I have not removed that yet. So, to operate the unit, pretty simple. You have a side button, which will be on your noggin. You simply press it to turn on. Right now it's turned on in high mode. Press it again to turn it off, turn on in high mode. Press and hold. It's now down in mixed low mode. So that is 100 lumens. High mode, 400 lumens. Now again, that's good for two and a half hours. Press and hold and mixed. That's good for six hours and 30 minutes. Now, when you're operating this, you'll see that I now have one beam on. And any time you can double click to get mixed mode back or double click to get one single beam back. Now again, once you're in that given mode, you can press and hold for lower modes. Press and hold, higher mode. Double press, both lights. Press and hold, low mode. You get the point. It's pretty intuitive actually. Once you get used to it, it's not bad at all. So that's kind of nice. It's not a bad little system there. Of course, it is adjustable. And it's smooth, right? So there's not a lot of fighting with this thing. It just turns real nicely. And this thing is comfortable. It's so balanced. Um, it is incredibly balanced. Another thing I was looking at too, obviously, is on the back of it, right? I love that. That is one super nice feature of the array is if you're a runner or cyclist, yeah, and at nighttime, we're gonna test this out tonight and step way back from it and see how visible this is. Um, I'll have to remind myself to do that in the beam shots um, to see just how visible those red lights are from, I don't know, 50 feet, 100 feet, so on and so forth. That's a really cool feature though. Now, of course, you know that the battery is built in. But what I'm wondering, and I'm going to need to contact Olight, is of course this, if you look, as I will mention later, this battery pack can come off. So I'm wondering if a person could order just a battery pack because the one thing I don't like about lights with a built-in battery is once the battery's gone, the light, you just toss it in the trash. I wouldn't want that to be the case with this light. I'm, I'm kind of fond of this thing. It's a good looking light. So now for charging, of course it comes with magnetic charging. And for that test, <clears throat> I'm going to bust out the old anchor battery brick. And there she goes. She's charging. Now, coincidentally, this is one of the units that will work while it's being charged. Pretty cool, right? So my initial impression so far before beam shots is very, very favorable. Um, but then again, I use them a lot. Now some people might go, well, you need more than 400 lumens. No, no you don't. I can hike in very technical terrain on 70 to 100 lumens all day and see perfectly fine. Um, and it depends on what you want and what you need. This may not be the light right, the light right for most people. Uh, we're going to test this on the trail extensively. 
and see how this guy really handles everyday life. So that being said, guys, we're going to take it on the trail. Let's do some beam shots. Okay, everybody. We are out at the trailhead, and we are going to be doing some beam shots with the Array headlamp. I do not have a tripod with me tonight, so if it's a little shaky, I do apologize for that. This is the one LED on. We'll do it that way. Low mode. High mode. Low mode. That's the single LED. Uh, there's a kiosk 150 foot out. I can barely see it. Let me turn that one LED on high mode. You can just kind of make it out down there. It's right in there. A little kiosk. Now we're going to turn on double LEDs. Now you can definitely see it. That's with both LEDs on. One. All right, let's cut the distance in half. Okay, so we have we have effectively have that distance, and with one LED, you can kind of see it. I mean, you can kind of see it making out a little bit right in there. So that's the low mode. Let's turn it on high. Single LED. You can definitely see the kiosk now. Now both LEDs for the high setting. Then the lowest setting on both LEDs. It's a little confusing with the UI, but it makes sense, I guess. Alright, let's get a little closer to it, take a look at it. clean color conditioning. Now this is the one LED. That is the lowest mode. So let's do some reading here. You know, that's not bad. This, this is the lowest mode. This really isn't bad. Now, obviously, you saw that it's good within 100 foot, definitely. Uh, at over 100 foot, it starts to really choke. Around 100 foot, man, it kind of comes to life here. So, you know what? I think it's time to hit the trail. Let's check it out. All right, so I do apologize in advance. We are walking on a trail, and this is a little bit different of an environment. So I'm going to try to keep shake down to a minimum. So we are on the trail in the woods. Um, this is the lowest mode, one LED on. My periphery is pretty good. It's easy to adjust. Um, wow, this is a very pleasant beam. This is at the lowest setting. And I am very comfortable with this. I've got a pretty good periphery. I mean, you know. That's not bad at all. There's nothing wrong with that beam for days. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a very pleasant beam. So, I'm gonna go up this hill here. We'll get up to this hop and then we'll crank it up a notch. Very pleasant. It's, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that beam for days. I like it. It's very smooth. It's uh, not a huge flutter, not a huge thrower. It just throws the light right where I need it. It's a well thought out beam for its purpose. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got here. So let's take it up one notch. One LED, high mode. Sorry if I'm breathing, but it's cold, and that was a big hill I just went up. What y'all bushcrafters doing? Nah. Nah, kids come up here and they uh, make a little play for it. Pretty cool. I used to patrol this park. It was uh, back in the day. Not too bad at all, right, guys? All right. So we're going to go down this hill to the creek. 
Then we'll uh, double tap for the highest two LED mode. And let's take a look. That tree is probably 30 foot down. This is a steep hill here, okay? That tree is probably 35, 40 foot out. I'm probably following it 50 to 60 foot high within the frame of the camera, just to give you a reference point. Roots, roots are important. I need to be able to see roots descending or running down a hill like this. The roots are crystal clear. I can see them. They're not shadowed out. They're not washed out. Um, pretty good. Take a look up the tree. Yeah, boy, I'm liking this. So comfortable. It is so comfortable. That's the thing. I don't even feel like I have anything on my head. It's such a balanced light. I think I saw something in there. <laughs> Sometimes there's geocaches hidden out here. Okay, so we're at an intersection here. We'll call this four points. You go that way, go that way, that way, or that way. I hope you're dizzy and puke now. Um, we're gonna turn on two LED mode. Okay, that is two LED mode and it's low mode. Really nice, pleasant beam. God, that's such a nice beam. It's got plenty of throw, plenty of flood. Color's nice. Let's see what you can see down the water. All right, so let's bump it up a setting. That is at the highest the slate will go. This section of the trail is a little bit more of a, what we call a green tunnel. And you can see it's lighting it up just beautifully. Wow, I am in love. <laughs> yeah, I know this light gets some haters, boy, I'm not one of them. But I'm in the woods a lot and I hike a lot. And this light just makes sense to me. It really does. Really nice. Really nicely done. Alright. Nothing wrong with this at all. Alright. Back in the day, people used to sneak back here in stealth camp. Let's see what we got going on today. spot you can hammock on those trees if you want yeah look at the beam I just I'm in love with this you know it's got the right amount of everything now back to its lowest mode and again even at that super low mode I can move Pretty quickly do technical train if I need to. I'm just gonna crank it up a notch here. I've got decent periphery and man at that lowest setting it's killing it. I'm loving it. So I was absolutely correct in my assumption that that lowest setting is very doable. Very doable. Doable for days. All right. Last little test. Out in front of me is a trash can. That is about 35 foot out across the trail. Low setting. You can kind of see it there. One LED, highest setting. Now you see it. Two LEDs, both, both going. Low mode, both LEDs. High mode. Nice guys. This is a nice light. Wow. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. I don't even feel like there's anything on my head. It's so comfortable. It's quite comfortable. Let's take a look at a little bit of a 
blow down stuff here just to the idea of the color conditioning. Super killer. Oh my god, I love this thing. It's just I, there's nothing on my head. That's the thing that's getting me about this headlamp. So guys, I'm gonna cut it short here. I do hope you enjoyed the beam shots. Cheers. Alright, well, we got a spinny thingy. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Huh? Not bad. I think it's cool. There's some downfalls to it, of course, like with anything, obviously. One of the glaring ones to me, obviously, was the fact that you cannot, I mean, the battery. I have to contact Olight and see, because you can see there's places where you could take that clip off. I wonder if you could get the battery pack. I would be very interested in owning a second battery pack for this. Um, to me, I think that would be great. And again, you can see where you can remove it. Right, right there. So this battery pack can completely come off. Um, that was one down fault. That's about it. Uh, that's really my only complaint. I, I think it's a great light. I think it's a well-balanced light. The weight, it's a little over four ounces. I mean, there, there's some night core lights out there that are pretty light too. Uh, I mean, really light that can put out this much volume. But where this light really shined to me was its balance, the feel of it. It is incredibly comfortable. If I'm going to get up at the butt crack of dawn at 3 a.m. and start hiking at 4 a.m. to beat the sun and the heat, I want something that's going to be comfortable. Hiking and backpacking is not always the most comfortable thing. You're carrying your home on your back day after day after day. At least it's nice to have something that feels good on the head. This light does that. It's beautifully balanced. I've never had a light that felt that comfortable. So with that all being said, you drop in the comments what you think about the Olight Array. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Do you have the Olight Array? You know the whole spiel. And again, go visit my friends Skype and Amazon. Cheers.